We light this chalice, symbol of Unitarian Universalism. May it remind us of the divine spark in all of creation, the power of love to heal what is broken, and to be grateful for life's blessings each day. We light this candle in solidarity with the Black Lives Matter movement and work for the day in which Black lives will be treated equitably with dignity and justice. Today, I have a story with Reverend Sherry to offer you. It is called The Invisible String by Patrice Karst. The twins, Liza and Jeremy, were asleep one calm and quiet night. Suddenly, it began to rain very hard. Thunder rumbled until it got so loud that it woke them up. Grammy, Grammy, they cried as they ran to her. Don't worry. It's just the storm making all that noise. Go back to bed. We want to stay close to you, said Jeremy. We're scared. You know we're always together, no matter what. But how can we be together when you're out here and we're in bed? Mom but, held something right in front of them and said, This is how. Rubbing their sleepy eyes, the twins came closer to see what she was holding. I was just about your age when my mom told me about the invisible string. I don't see a string, said Jeremy. You don't need to see the invisible string. People who love each other are always connected by a special string made of love. But if you can't see it, how do you know it's there? Even though you can't see it with your eyes, you can feel it with your heart. When you're at school and you miss me, your love travels all the way along the street and I feel it tug at my heart. And when you tug back on it, we feel it in our hearts. have an invisible string? He sure does. And best friends like me and Lucy too? Well, certainly best friends too. How far can that string reach? Anywhere and everywhere. Would it reach me even if I were a submarine captain deep in the ocean? Even there. Or a mountain climber? Even there. A ballerina in France? Even there. A jungle explorer? Even there. How about an astronaut out in space? Yes, even there. Then Jeremy quietly asked, can my string reach all the way to Uncle Brian in heaven? Yes, even there. There. Does the string go away when you're mad at us? Never. Love is stronger than anger. And as long as there is love in your heart, the string will always be there. Even when you get older and you don't agree about what movie to see. Or who gets to ride in the front seat. Or, 
what time to go to bed. Hmm. That reminds me, you two should be in bed. <laughs> oh, I thought you wouldn't remember. <laughs> and Grammy chased the twins back to bed. Within a few minutes, they were asleep, even though the storm was still making the same loud noises outside. As they slept, they started dreaming of all the invisible strings they have and all the strings their friends have and their friends have and their friends have until everyone in the world was connected by invisible strings. And from deep inside, they could clearly see how no one is ever alone. The end. Thank you, Reverend Cherry. Thank you, Pastor Teresa. This is the time in our service where we prepare and give our offerings. While you write your checks to be mailed, while you review your statements of auto drafts, or while you click at our website to donate. Think of how our collective funds is another ply in our bridge that connects us to each other. The church and the world beyond our walls is brought together by these connections and contributions. Thank you for preparing your offering this week. To the work of the church, which is weaving a tapestry of love we call community, we dedicate ourselves and these are offerings. Good morning, UU family. Today, uh, we are challenged to reflect with wisdom on how to feel connected with physical distance. Um, this made me think about my own family that I grew up with on the East Coast, 3,000 miles away, uh, where my parents continue to reside and my sister lives uh, near them, relatively near them. And I was thinking about how close I feel with them, even though we're so far away. And I thought maybe this idea could help me feel close to you while we are physically separated. And I thought about how we have so many memories that really bind us with strength. And when we do talk over the phone or other technology, that it's as if we are right there with each other. And it made me feel comforted uh, with this idea of ex mutual experience that connects us. And it made me think, well, I can use that to continue to feel close with my church community. But I was also thinking about how it sometimes it's tougher than that, that there are families who are dealing with incarceration and with immigration and that type of separateness might require more than a bridge of love and memories that faith and hope must be added to that bridge in order to strengthen it. Otherwise, we might be overwhelmed with sadness or panic or worry. So it made me think about our connection as a bridge of rope that has many plies and one are our memories and one is love and another is faith and another is hope. The hope that we stay healthy and the hope that we will see each other soon. Um, the hope that 
our separateness will end at some point and we can be physically close again. And it also reminded me of a recent podcast I heard on the hidden brain where the idea was discussed of having conversations uh, in your own mind as a practice with those who are physically apart from us, whether it be a deity or a family member or um, a mentor that gives us strength and hope or an imaginary friend of a child, um, that these regular conversations that we have where we ask questions and report stories and imagine answers and imagine affirmations, that this practice can actually make us sense closeness and even hear the voices of those we are missing. So with this reflection, I hope that in the coming weeks while we are separated, you imagine me saying only the wisest of things and that we build these bridges of closeness despite our separateness. And so it is, blessed be. Good morning, First Unitarian Church of Oakland. I'm speaking to you from my apartment because we're not meeting in person today. We are working really hard at helping to flatten the curve of new infections. We're also trying to be as safe as possible with all the people in our community who can't take such a heavy risk with their health. Thank you for your teamwork on this. Today, I want to talk to you a little bit about how we can show up during this time. When I got hit by a car in January, I ended up getting treated for a sprained ankle. Have you heard that acrostic before? I'm sure you have. It's called RICE. Rest, ice, compress, and elevate. You must rest. For some of you, this time is harder than usual. You can't keep your routine. All your supports are not in place. You have additional responsibilities. I understand. I don't mean rest in the sense of sunning yourself on a beach. Although, if you have that opportunity, maybe take it. What I actually mean is checking in with your mind, your body, and your spirit. If you're here listening to this message, then you have prioritized checking in with your spirit. Do the same with your body. Make a promise that you'll do the things that make you feel healthy and strong. Do the same thing with your mind. Witness your thoughts. Get support where you need it. Find joy where it is. How about ice? What are we putting on ice? Well, we're going to have to put some impatience on ice. You see, this illness, COVID-19, is biphasic. That means people get sick once. They think they're getting better. Some people have even been released from the hospital. And then they get sick again. That means that they are a second wave of people who can possibly infect others. That's why our patience will be required. What about compress? We're compressing two things. One thing is the urge to isolate. To think that if we make it, that's enough. Because the truth is, all of us need all of us to make it. My, my partner, the Reverend Sean Parker Dennison, wrote a beautiful poem to this end called How to Survive the Apocalypse. Today, I'll be able to share that with you. I also want you to think about compressing the urge that you have to act as though you may have more time. If you have love to share, share it now. If you have good to do and you are able, do it now. If you have fences to mend, do it now. 
I'm not telling you that you need to forgive people who've harmed you at any cost, right? Boundaries exist for a reason, but there are some that you may know need tending. Go ahead, use your courage for that purpose. The last one is elevate. What do we mean by that? Well, it's going to be time that you need to elevate your spirit. And while you're doing that, elevate the spirit of others. People are going to be reaching out and they're going to need to be reached out to. And that witness that we can provide one another helps us keep our spirits strong. I'm really proud of you as a community for the way you've moved forward, continued talking and connecting, for the way you're looking for ways to support one another. That's exactly right. It's going to be a little while longer, but we're in it together. I love you very much. I'd like to close today with a blessing for washing hands during a pandemic by Tricia Arlen. As we wash our hands, we pray, blessed is the soul of the universe, breathing us in and breathing us out. May our breath continue and our health and the health of all be preserved. In this time of sickness and fear of sickness, holy wholeness, we take as much responsibility for this as we can by observing the obligation to wash our hands thoroughly for as long as it takes to say this prayer. <laughs>